Welcome to the Two Guys in a Cooler channel. My name is Eric, and today we get to start a fun and exciting series on salami chambers. We all love it when that salami chamber is full of whole muscles and cured meats, but what happens when it's empty? In this series, we're gonna go over some fun and creative ideas on what to do with your salami chamber when you're not curing meat. In this episode, we're gonna be fermenting cabbage to make a probiotic-rich sauerkraut with the perfect texture, the most amazing flavor, and let's just face it, it's just gonna be good. If you follow these simple instructions, you will have guaranteed success every time. And so let's get right into it. Let's make sauerkraut in our salami chamber. The first thing we wanna do is sanitize our equipment. This is quite possibly the most important step of making sauerkraut. I like to use a sanitizer called Iodophore because it's odorless, it's tasteless, it works very fast, it's an iodine-based sanitizer. And I'm just putting a very small amount in this little cup, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. You can even put like an eighth of a teaspoon. And I'm gonna take that concentrated iodine sanitizer, put it into a squirt bottle, and get ready to use it. The neat thing about Iodophore is that you just spray it on whatever surface you need to have sanitized. If you're gonna be using any bins, any utensils, uh, obviously your crock pots, you wanna have those sanitized. And how we use Iodophore is to simply spray down the entire surface area of whatever you're looking to sanitize and then let it sit for two minutes. That's it. The rest of the things I'm gonna sanitize are gonna be the stones. Those are the stones that we use to weigh down the sauerkraut. I'm gonna boil those in some vinegar water solution for about 10 minutes as well and get those nice and sanitized. And now it's time to prepare the cabbage. You wanna to try to get your hands on fresh cabbage. The fresher the cabbage, the more water there's gonna be within the head. The older the cabbage, the drier your head of cabbage is gonna be, and you're gonna have a really hard time getting the water content that you need to make sauerkraut, which is absolutely critically important. So the first thing you wanna do with your cabbage is remove the outer leaves. Set those to the side, because I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with those in a minute. Core your cabbage, and once you have your cabbage cored, put that in a bin, we're gonna process that. Take some white vinegar, create a 50-50 solution with water and vinegar, and pour that with your cabbage leaves that you separated originally. We're gonna come back to those cabbage leaves as we're gonna use it to hold down our sauerkraut, but we want them to be sanitized. Once you have all that done, let's go ahead and shred the cabbage. You wanna shred your cabbage as thinly and as uniformly as possible, and this is gonna give you the absolute best control over how it ferments. Once you get that done, it's time to weigh your cabbage and add salt. We wanna create a 2% brine for this particular sauerkraut. You could do anywhere from two to two and a half percent, and that's gonna be just enough to create an inhospitable environment for unwanted bacteria. So I'm gonna weigh my cabbage in batches, and as I'm weighing it, I'm gonna jot that down. For this particular batch, we're gonna make about 30 pounds of sauerkraut. Uh, the bin could have held another 10 pounds easily, but as you can see, I'm gonna calculate all my totals, and then I'm gonna multiply that by 0 0.02, or 2%. And the answer is gonna give me how much salt I need to add. Now, I'm working in grams, because it's more accurate, but my total is 269.62 grams. That's gonna give me a 2% salinity content. The salt that you're gonna to wanna to use, preferably, is sea salt, basically any salt without any additives. And like I said before, you can go between two to two and a half percent. Evenly spread your salt amongst your cabbage and mix it well. Make sure you put a cover on it and let it sit for one hour. This will allow the cabbage an opportunity to begin releasing its juices. This next step is incredibly important. We're gonna to try to work the salt into the cabbage, and we're gonna do that by squeezing our cabbage. So you're gonna to wanna to squeeze your cabbage for about 10 minutes, and you're gonna know that your cabbage has been properly macerated when it begins to get soft and juices everywhere. Once that has happened, begin putting it in your bin. And I put in layers at a time, and with just a rolling pin, I'm gonna pound it down. Now, I'm not trying to crush the cabbage. What I'm trying to do is eliminate any air pockets. Once you have all your cabbage in your bin, take those sanitized 
cabbage outer leaves that I originally picked off and I'm gonna make sure that I create a layer directly on top of the cabbage. Finally, I'm gonna take my weights and I'm gonna go ahead and set that on that cabbage layer that we just added. Once we've done that, we're gonna take any extra brine that we have in our container and we're gonna pour that directly on top. Mine ended up making about four liters of brine, which is absolutely perfect. As I finish putting the brine in this fermenting crock, we're gonna move it to the fermenting chamber, which is our salami chamber. And the reason I like putting it in there is because we can control the temperature at which it ferments. Carefully place your lid right back on it and then fill that water reservoir up with water. This is gonna create an airlock, making you have an anaerobic environment. Adjust the temperature of your chamber to 65 degrees Fahrenheit and 24 hours later, I want you to give it a check. And the only reason you're gonna check it is to ensure that the water level is above your weights by at least one inch. Before we open it, I want you to look at how active this unit is just within 24 hours. It's bubbling like crazy. Look at that, <laughs> how cool is that? All right, let's go ahead and open this up and just double check, make sure our water level is above our weights. And that's what we're looking for. We wanna make sure that everything stays under the brine and now we're gonna cover this right back up. Once you have it covered, you wanna to try to not mess with it for the duration of the fermentation. The more you open your crock pot, the more you invite unwanted variables to your ferment. So sit back, be patient, make sure your chamber is at 65 degrees and be sure to check out my better than bratwurst video so by the time this sauerkraut is done, you'll be eating the best bratwurst you've ever had. Allow this sauerkraut to ferment undisturbed for 21 days. That's gonna give you the best texture, the best flavor, and the most probiotics within your sauerkraut. While we're letting that ferment, let's answer the million dollar question. Why use a salami chamber to make sauerkraut? Because yeah, obviously you could put this on your kitchen counter, you could let it go for two or three weeks and you're gonna get what you're gonna get. Well, let me explain something to you. There's gonna be a lot of microbiological activity going on, specifically the development of the lactobacillus strain of bacteria, which is accredited for doing a lot of things, but specifically consuming sugar and releasing lactic acid. At certain temperatures, certain lactobacillus strains do better. Let me show you. Within the first three days, that first lactobacillus strain begins to form if your temperatures are under 70 degrees. 65 is optimal. That particular strain produces lactic acid, acetic acid, ethyl alcohol, mannitol, which is slightly bitter, and then the carbon dioxide, which is all the bubbles that you see forming. Between day three and day 16, the lactobacillus strain plantarum is then formed. And this guy actually helps reduce the mannitol, begins to consume sugar, and also produces lactic acid. This is gonna drop the pH, creating a really probiotic rich environment. Finally, day 17 to day 21, the grand finale, lactobacillus pentoacidicus. This particular lactobacillus strain is gonna finish it up. It's gonna consume the remaining sugars, lower the pH a little more, round it off. You see, in an open environment, it's very difficult to regulate the temperature, but in a chamber, we can control the environment. And so at 65 degrees Fahrenheit, we ensure that we allow these strains to develop in the correct order, providing the most benefit with the greatest amount of flavor for your sauerkraut. If the temperature rises above 70 degrees, you miss out on that first strain, which is critical for sauerkraut development. Now that we've got the science out of the way, let's talk about the equipment. Technically, all you need is a mason jar and an airlock, but if you're serious about fermenting, you might wanna consider looking into fermenting crocs. If you've never been to the Sausage Makers website, check out the link that I've got in the description box below. You're gonna notice that they not only have everything you need for sausages, but they carry an entire line of products for food preservation, specifically crock pots, ranging from five liters on up to 20 liters, which is the one I have. The prices range between sizes and manufacturers, and I can tell you this, regardless of which one you choose, you can't go wrong. If you're just getting started, maybe look into the five liter or the 10 liter crock pot, but if you're serious about fermenting and you want a game changer, check out their 15 or 20 liter crock pot. As a bonus, the Sausage Maker has extended to our subscribers a discount code. You can find it in the description box below. Thank you, Sausage Maker. It is now time for the reveal. Let's check it out. This cabbage has been fermenting for 21 days at 65 degrees Fahrenheit in our salami chamber. 
We had a 2% salinity, everything has been under the brine, properly sanitized, and our cabbage was thinly sliced. The conditions are perfect. The smell coming from this vessel right now smells wonderful. It's a nice fermented smell. Nothing off about it at all. Notice how the color of my cabbage is nice and bright. It's not discolored in any way. It looks amazing and I cannot wait to taste it. This very simple salt and cabbage has been transformed into something incredible. And here we go. Oh wow, that's good. The texture is perfect. The cabbage is crispy. The flavor is so complex and well-developed. I really do hope you get a chance to try this. If you got any questions about this project, leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to stick around for part two where we explore the most radical way of using your salami chamber when it's empty. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed. Click that button right now with the notification bell. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share. Help me spread the love. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.